So we just finished posting assignment two, which was our composite fantasy creature. And now we have something new in the class. It's called the proving ground. This is where we actually apply what we've learned for kind of a real world practice. And so what we're going to be doing is putting our fantasy creature into our fantasy landscape. And if you didn't finish your fantasy landscape to your own satisfaction, or you didn't finish your fantasy creature to your own satisfaction, but you still want to get credit for the proving ground, which you do want because this is one of the requirements for getting your creative problem solving badge, then you are allowed for this assignment to use a found landscape or a found creature, or in dire circumstances, both <laughs> a found creature and a found landscape. Because the skill here isn't in the creation of the landscape or the creature, it's in the blending of the two to put one believably into the other. Does that make sense to everyone? So though it's ideal to have your creature already finished to bring into your landscape, and it will improve both your creature and your landscape, and then you could resubmit assignments one and assignments two after the proving ground, because they'll already be improved. That's ideal, but better to do it with something rather than, than not do it at all. So here's an example. Here is a creature, here's a landscape, but what's kind of the impressive digital skill that's applied here is recognizing the commonalities between the, the landscape lighting and angle and perspective and the lighting and the angle and perspective on the creature and getting those to match so they feel like they're in the same environment. In the same way that in a movie like Space Jam that uses hand-drawn characters with live-action footage, they can observe the lighting of a setting and then match that with their, their digitally embedded designs. So like the rim lighting on the back, the cast shadows underneath, the color temperature, the softness of shadows, uh, even things like the atmosphere, like if it's a scene where they're breathing hard and you'll see like little puffs of monster gas coming out of their nostrils, right? To match the atmosphere of, of this interior. So we want our creaturescapes to be similarly engaging. And we're going to look at things like the focal points, the lighting, and the atmosphere. The goal for this is to showcase your creature, not just to hide it. It's not a Where's Waldo project. Instead, we want your creature to occupy, and this is a little tough sometimes, but around a quarter of the image minimum. It can take up half the image. But you want your, your creature to be clearly there. Sometimes to make that happen, we need to crop the landscape. So that's a smaller aspect of our landscape in order to showcase the creature. But don't make the creature tiny. Don't make it 5% of the whole. Because then we're really not able to see if you're able to blend it. So that's why I say to do this, it might be best to crop down from your original, original landscape. Here are the criteria. This is a different rubric than our assignment rubric or our exercises which are all about just creating something. This is, and, and matching certain assignment requirements, this is about concepts of creativity and for creative problem solving. So you're going to have to do three things. The first thing you're going to have to do is recognize what the resolution limits are for your landscape and for your creature. And Mason, as a digital honor student, this is excused for you. You've already done this. You don't have to do the proving ground whatsoever. Okay. Uh, but for all you digital one students, so that means you'll have to check, because it's always good to check, what is the resolution of your landscape? That's the limiting factor. If you crop it down, what is the resolution then? A resolution is made up of the physical dimensions and the pixel resolution, the pixels per inch. And then all you have to do is name the correct resolution type. Was this a good enough resolution for, for printing? what we'll call print resolution, or is this only good enough for screen resolution? And it's going to be good enough for one of those. And then you also have to list what your physical dimensions are in inches and what the pixels per inch, per inch are. And that's the same kind of thing you would need to print the image. You'll get full credit for that. You'll get half credit if you do one but not the other, and you'll get zero points for that if you don't mention your resolution at all and just put an image online. 
Second part is we have to recognize commonalities among seemingly unrelated situations. This is about putting our creature into the landscape and matching things like its angle of the anatomy so that like feet are on the ground or that shadows are in the right place and that the lighting makes sense with the environment. So if we can match the lighting and the angle of the anatomy, you can get full credit for that. And then the last one is kind of the most interesting. We said how you can't copyright concepts but you still need concepts, right? So this is where you're going to write your explanation for how your creature survives in that environment that you're putting it into. That concept of it, it can just be a few sentences, you know, should not be an essay or anything, and there are examples. Uh, it should just tell basic concerns about how they survive in this kind of fantasy environment. How do they breathe? How do they eat? How do they shelter? Uh, are they predator, are they prey, that kind of thing. Now, for examples of that, because that's something added since we've added the badge, you have to go to these past examples, which give those things, the resolution, and then the, the explanation, and then the creature matching with lighting and angle in the environment. Okay. So to get this done, we first have to get our landscape and our creature. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm going to go to my files here. And we're going to start with the landscape. And I want to find my highest resolution landscape file. And in this case, it's going to be this PSD with all of its layers. All right, so here's my assignment one. There are definitely still things that I can improve on this project. And so this was just finished enough to be turned in. But this is a chance for me to improve upon it. So I've got this landscape. And most importantly, I've got the layers that create this landscape. The foreground, the middle ground, the background. I can check what its resolution is by going to image an image size and seeing in inches, this is 19 inches by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So this is way beyond the eight by 10 by 300 pixels per inch uh, print threshold. So this is better than print resolution. Okay, the next thing I need is my assignment to clean character. And what's interesting is I actually don't need the PSD. This is my PSD with all of the different component layers. I need this to improve it using the different layers. But what I need for this project is the PNG, the cutout of it. So the first step for the proving ground is to actually open up assignment two, the PSD, in order to improve it to get the cleanest outside edges and most refined kind of flat image you can. So I'm going to show you one way to do this. I'm going to go to my very top visible layer. In this case, it's the group for the head. And I can see immediately that on that layer, I can get away with erasing a little bit more from these shoulders. So I'm going to use my tablet. This is just extending and finishing off this assignment. So any kind of changes you want to make. I want a little less of this feather, a little bit more of this rock texture. So I want this to look like a really weird sludge monster in the candy landscape. And I might use things like dodge and burn on the character itself, like burn the shadow under the chin. You 
can do that on a few different layers. I can even burn the, the, uh, the highlights. But I always burn at less than 20%. And this just improves my character before I start bringing it on. And then there is this arm that I added. And I'm just going to do some quick dodging and burning on that to help turn it and have it look a little less copy-pasted from the other arm. And I can do direct adjustments, but I'm just making some, some quick improvements here because often all we need is time. So if I dodge it on the side where it's catching light, like so, and burn it on the underside, and then I can trim it a little bit better with a 0.8 pixel feather, And then I can determine, okay, I need to cut this, these fingers out a little bit. So you're just looking especially at the outside edges and getting as clean a PNG as you can. So I'm going to cut out the fingers here. It's okay that the hand is a little backwards. It's just kind of the pigeon toadness of the, the frog that I took it from. Okay, next other things. I see this is kind of standing out too much and you've got to find what layer that's from and then I'm going to blend it in with that soft edged eraser. That helps the, the arm stand out. And then behind the arm as well. So I'm just, these things that need to be fixed anyway before I bring it over. Kind of better cutouts, cleaner transitions, and especially nicer outside edges. And then this bottom, there's the green here. I need to get rid of that but I first need to be on the right layer. So I'm using the auto select layer function of the move tool a lot here. And in, to soften in general, I'm gonna select everything around this layer, my foot using the magic wand. And then I just want to soften that edge a little bit. So I'm going to go to select and mask. And feather it at maybe 2.2 pixels, something like that. And now when I bite away at it with that feather, it will soften all the way around that foot. And take a little bit of that green reflected light from the plant that was underneath it away. Okay, my next step, this is really good before you're proving ground. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit Command S. That's my PSD. My next step is to go to my very top group or visible layer that's turned on. And I'm going to have the background turned off here. And I'm going to say Option. I'm going to hold down Option, Layer, Merge, Visible. By holding down Option, that puts it all onto one layer but does not delete the layers underneath. So I have the head, I have the body. All of these are going to be safe in my Photoshop file. So you go to your topmost layer that's turned on and you hold down the option key. And while you hold down the option key, you go to layer, merge, it will be merge visible. And then it will make a duplicate of everything merged all together on top of your existing layers. If you don't hold down option, it will collapse all of your existing layers. And you lose them, right? 
So this is a way to get a duplicate that merges them all. Very, very helpful. So I've just done it twice here. Now it's all together. So now I can use dodge and burn 